Hello YouTube, Mr. Report Newsletter and Tudor Group subscribers. This is Terrell from Terrell03.com. Today is January 14th, 2020. And this is the Mr. Report um, update report for newsletter number two for 2020. This weekly newsletter program is all about helping people see God's wisdom hidden in plain sight using his three witnesses of spirit, water, and blood, testifying in the Holy Scriptures from Genesis 1-1 through Revelation. And you see that uh, this is a radio series right here. John sent me one a week. This is number seven. And these are from 2012. Before the Mystery Explained was published, it was in between when it was written in 2005 and when it was published in 2017. And he, this, each of these, uh, these are all uh, presentations on scripture that started with a Black Star Update report. So John, he edited the, the Black Star reports out and he's putting this together, this series together for us. It's going to go up to about 37. I think he said there's 37 or 38 of these from back from 2012. Now this week we took a little bit of a different change. We moved a little bit different uh, direction. Brian helped to um, manipulate the narrative. This is the pattern that we've been following. Next, because we did this one last week, how the mystery diagrams work, but that was presented as God's true Bible code. The three witnesses of spirit, blood, and water. My intention was to cover Savannah's born difference between being born again and being which is born from above and being a brand new creature like we are in Christ Jesus that's gonna be an important topic and then this the spirit and the soul a lot of people have questions about the differences between the spirit and the soul Bonnie asked it back in 2017 that's the video you can come here and click on it so this is where I was heading this is where I'm still heading but Brian has been following my work since 2013, and he's read my book, read, uh, read my book several times. He's been asking questions along the way, and he's a good measuring stick for you guys. Someone that's that's that you started the program, and now you're wanting to get excited like a little kid on Christmas morning. I'm not kidding you. That's the way I was when I was in the in the 80s and the 90s, seeing these things. And I'm you look down the testimonies uh, testimonials, you'll see some of that bleeding through in some of the um, members mystery report newsletter members that are seeing these things Brian's one that sees it and he asked some very good questions there's quite a few questions down in here and uh, so he changed my mind here he wrote me here on the 12th and he said uh, that he needs some help on the skins of Adam of Adam Abraham John the Baptist, Elijah, and David as Prince King, same person? I know, that sounds that sounds amazing in one way, and it sounds kind of uh, ridiculous on the other, doesn't it? Because Hebrews 9.27 says that it's for man to die once and then the judgment. So what's up with that? There are, there are exceptions to that rule. And, well, obviously Elijah's one of them, right? I mean, he went to heaven. He didn't see death. He jumped in that chariot of fire, and they took him directly to heaven. So there are exceptions, and that's what uh, in in my book the uh, the topic of the mystery of Christ is covered extensively, and in the Pauline epistles it is covered extensively, and God's mystery. So you you have God's mystery that is Christ and then you have the mystery of Christ and then whenever you begin looking at the three witnesses of spirit blood and water God's a spirit witness heaven of Genesis 1 1 pull the diagram here this is where everything begins in Genesis 1 1 that's if, if you're following me along then you know what I'm talking about this is the key that we need to break God's code in the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth, spirit, blood, and water. But as we learn the differences between Jesus Christ and Christ Jesus, that heaven of Genesis 1-1 is the word of John 1-3. 1, 1 through 3. 
In the beginning was the Word, heaven, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. In the infinite realm, God and His Word are the same thing. Same was in the beginning with God. In the beginning was the heaven and the earth. You get it? All things were made by Him. Right? And the all things is right over here, the earth. Well, this right here is Adam. This is the first Adam. This is the last Adam. And that's all there is. Heaven and earth. This is created. The only realm that's real is God's infinite realm. Where you're a God and I'm a God. Where you're a member of my body and I'm a member of your body. We already know each other intimately. We just don't realize that yet. Some of us do. Some of us are growing to that. But this is the key right here to break the code. And the next one in line is this one. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. The heaven became the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. My Father who art in heaven gets his name from Genesis 1.1. The heaven of Genesis 1.1. That's the highest heaven. Keep reading, and you're going to get down to heaven being begotten in Genesis 1.8. Here's a heaven in Genesis 1.1. There's a heaven in Genesis 1.8. Because this is the highest heaven. This is the heaven. That's between the heavens and the earth. The earth of Genesis 1.1. Three witnesses testifying for the earth. Three witnesses testifying for heaven. And three witnesses testifying for God. See how that works? Okay. So, whenever you look at these diagrams and you realize there's a mystery. God's, God's mystery. Colossians 2.2. God's mystery. The mystery of Christ. Ephesians 3, 4, Colossians 4, 3. Almost seems to even have a numerology to it in the scriptures. But where's the mystery of Adam? Where is it? There's got to be one. Based upon the three witnesses of spirit, blood, and water. See, three witnesses of spirit, blood, and water tell you a lot. This is the spirit, this is the soul, this is the body. That's the man that I just showed you standing up. Okay, so there's the link to the... Uh, and this is where I've been spending most of my time. Right here. And I'm in the dispensational the di dispensationalism room. This is the general theology and then uh, dispensationalism. And I come here not because I'm a dispensationalist. I come here because dispensationalists are some of the brightest of the members of Christ's body. At least they recognize the difference in the diff different dispensations. The kingdom dispensation, Peter, John, and James. The grace dispensation, Paul, Barnabas, and Titus. Meeting in Acts 15 and Galatians 2. Okay. So that's why we're here. And this is where, see, God's true Bible code. That's where my topic. There's been five replies. A lot, a lot of views and not many replies. Not many people can write on this topic. This one here, the mystery of Adam. 203 views. There's nobody that's replied on it yet. So this is on this is the deep end of the pool right here, to where I'm taking you right now. There is quite a bit of activity on the two Gospels of the New Testament, 128. A lot of these, are, there's people bickering back and forth. They're not addressing me in the opening posts. Mystery topic is dedicated to building the strong doctrinal foundation by carefully examining the differences between the Gospel of the Kingdom and our Word of the Cross Gospel message. It's very important that we start off with that to build a strong doctrinal foundation. So when I'm saying gospel, then you're going, you know, some people just talk about the gospel as if there's only one of them. They say, well, it's the gospel of Jesus Christ. Well, is it the gospel of the kingdom or is it our word of the cross? See, whenever we, we, what we're doing is removing the semantics, building a strong doctrinal foundation. So when I say the gospel, then you're going, are you talking about the gospel of the kingdom? Or are you talking about the gospel of the grace of God? You see, I'm talking about the baptisms, the four baptisms we went through already. Is it our one baptism into Christ, or is it John's baptism for the forgiveness of sins? It's very important that we know the differences in these things so that we don't not confuse them as being the same thing. That's what it's about. Well, this is uh, this is where I've been. This is what I really love to do. And uh, I tried on the other, the religiousforum.com. Uh, There's just not enough traffic there. There's not enough people. These people are more developed. And I'm not here because they agree with me. They Whenever you read the post... I mean, these people are kind of mean to me sometimes. And um, I got a little uh, flack from a subscriber uh, because of mentioning about being banned in some forums and being, 
you know, like it's nitpick or like it's petty, but it's very important. Don't be deluded to thinking that just because you see the truth in Scripture, because I know a lot of you guys are seeing it, you're getting a lot of emails, you, you see the three witnesses and all of a sudden you, you're like a little kid. And you have a shiny toy and, oh my goodness, it's so cool. And so you're thinking, well, I'm going to go out here to the Bible boards and, and knock them dead. That's not how it's going to work. Like the truth is going to overcome, like David and Goliath. Because we're living in the evil age. The devil is running around devouring as we speak. And many of them are running these boards. And the, many of the people you're debating against, they're blinded by denominationalism, by the mystery of iniquity. And so you're going to be their heretic. It's like Christ came in truth, knew no sin. Look what they did to him. When you carry the truth, you're going to become a target. That's the purpose of showing you that. And as it's happening in real time, I felt like it was very important. So that you realize, and, th and then you say, well, I'm sharing the truth, but they're beating me over the head. That's, you're John the Baptist. You might get your head cut off. That's the way that it works. Okay. So let's get, uh, this is the, uh, where I go. BibleGateway.com. And I use the New American Standard Bible. Over the New King James Bible, those are going to be the two best. But the, the King James Bible and the New King James Bible, not the old 1600 English, the new one. That's, that's a translation of the received text. The Antiochian manuscripts, I prefer the older Egyptian manuscripts. That's the New American Standards. Uses the critical text. That's the difference. So maybe it's not a good idea to stay in one. I was a New King James guy for the first decade of my ministry and then switched over because th there are copy errors in both. But for me, it's important to know both. The, 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 passage, the, the Bible that I use is the Greek interlinear, the Nelsons, and it's the uh, New King James, but it shows you the critical text right along with it. And it shows you the majority text too, right along with it, which the majority text is not an actually a set of manuscripts like the Byzantine or the Antiochian that make up the, the received text and the critical text. That's just what the majority of the texts say. That's what the majority text is. Okay, so I like the interlinear Bible. I like to look at the prefixes and suffixes on the Greek. When you're using the Strong's, you're only dealing with root words. So it says, oh, this word's used 200 times. No, it's not. It's used as a root word 200 times. There are actually uh, many other different words and you wanna look at the prefixes and suffixes in the Greek to know exactly what you I mean if you're really going to study God's word and you and you want to dissect and trisect the original language then you're going to have to get away from just using the roots and look at the real Greek the way it's written that's where you're going to the, the inter, interlinear bibles are going to come in okay so enough on that this is the website where I frequent I hope you'll come to cf.com christianforms.com and it's free and then you can ask questions right on here. I can answer you right on here. You get your answers quicker. Those, then those, your questions, my answers go into the weekly newsletters to help others. Help you, so you get help right away. Like Brian just answered in this morning. And then you, you guys that uh, download the newsletter, you're going to see what's going on in Second Thessalonians 2. Some of the most difficult, some of the most difficult verses to interpret correctly are in Second Thessalonians 2. The reason is because Paul's already explained everything to them face to face. So he's he knows what he's already told them. So he's, there are omissions. You tell somebody a story, but then you refer to it later. You don't tell them the whole story again. That's what's going on. That's why it's a little bit difficult. Okay, the mystery of Adam. There's the link. This is what inspired the question that I just read to you. Are they the same person? And absolutely, yes, they are. Now, this is the deep side of the pool. It's easy to get over here on this deep side and drown. It's real easy. It's a little more complicated, but it's the seventh now lesson in the series. If you're following along, and some of you are going to be able to get it, the thing to realize, if it's just milk every week, just the doctrine every week, then you're going to lose the people that are on the mature side. If it's just the mature all the time, then you're never helping the people that are on the milk side. My objective is to try to do both. That's the best of my ability. You know, a mixture of the milk and a mixture of the meat. 
if you're only ready for milk, then a lot of these things you're not going to see yet. But you're going to get catch it later. And the, the important thing is to see the patterns in the three witnesses of spirit, like Elijah, water, like Moses, and the Lord God, Christ, standing between them, the blood witness. Okay, which is the last three witnesses of the Lord God of the Garden of Eden. That's Jesus Christ. He's the Lord God. The Lamb of God is the Lord God of Genesis 2, who makes, guess who, Adam and Eve. And guess who's standing next to him? Elijah and Moses. Guess who's standing with him? The first is last, and the last is first. Elijah is another skin for our father Adam. Moses is another skin for our mother Eve. Just like David and Bathsheba. Just like Abraham and Sarah. Same two witnesses. That's the two olive trees of Zechariah. Chapter 4, start at verse 11. Okay, so your question pertains to one of the most difficult topics to explain from God's living word, requiring mature members of Christ's body to understand using correct biblical interpretations, using the spirit, blood, water characters, along with the types from God's word. For example, the Apostle Paul and the Holy Spirit teach on the topics of the body of Christ and the body of Moses. All are baptized into Moses, right? First Corinthians, uh, First Corinthians 10, 1 through 5. But you will um, find nothing about the body of Elijah. There's a body of Christ. There's a body of Moses that, that all of Israel is being baptized into. And it's not just Israel. When you realize what's going on here is that God's using Moses. He's using Mosaic law for making Moses the steward, like Paul's the steward of the dispensation of God's grace. Moses the steward through whom the Lord God dispenses Mosaic law to Israel of the flesh. But Israel, the chosen race, they're chosen for a reason. And salvation is from the Jews according to the gospel of the kingdom and that's going to the whole world think about it that's going to everybody's going to have an opportunity to accept the gospel of the kingdom whether he's jew or gentile because all are to be baptized into the body of moses see this sea of glass that's where they're going but those obeying our gospel we're inside the lamb we're here in the body of christ right in here well this is god handing down god who is there is the lamb in the center of the throne we're members of his body we're seated in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus up here. We have an incarnation in the Lamb. Okay. Three witnesses. So what the what I'm trying to say is, is that just like there's a body of Christ and there's a body of Moses, there's, there's a body of Elijah too. It's representative of the angels. The if you go back to Genesis chapter right before Adam and Eve get put in skins, Genesis three twenty one, the verse before that. That Eve is mother of all living. So put the men and the women, the, all the living, over here on this side. And put their angel half over on this side. And then you're going to realize who Adam and Eve are. Adam's representative of all the angels. Eve's representative of all the men. All the angels over here in the heavens and all the men over here in the world. That's what this sea of glass thing is about. With the lamb in the middle. So those of us who have obeyed our gospel, Paul's gospel, our man half and our angel half are already put back together again. We're already one, seated in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Our Father half and our Holy Spirit half are already put back together again. Our angel half and our man half are already put back together again. We're in the Lamb, in his, a member of his incarnation. Peter, John, and James are not. They're still outside. And they have an angel half over here on the Sea of Glass. So whenever you see Revelation's descriptions of the Sea of Glass, it says it's before the throne. It is before the throne. It doesn't tell you there's an invisible sea on the far side that holds their angel half. That's the part that you learn through the types. Okay? The same way that we're going to learn about the, the mystery of Adam, by using the types. Okay? So you stand with Peter, John, and James bearing witness to Moses, Christ, and Elijah on the Mount of Transfiguration to realize there is much more going on here than meets the natural man's eye. 
Know very carefully that God's Son is restoring Adam. God's Son restoring Adam. The heavens is Adam's spirit. The earth, the visible universe, that's his body. That's where the men dwell, and this is what Eve's all, all about. Eve and Moses is all about. Well, I just it, and Adam's over here. This is the Lord God that's, at, that's right in standing between them. On the Mount of Transfiguration and back in the garden. right but Standing right between them. The first and the last. These are the last. Christ in his kingdom. With these two characters here. That are from the Bible characters. That are Moses and Elijah. Adam and Eve. As strange as that sounds. Okay. So the Son's being restored here, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, as Adam is on the, the altar just below him. God is seated in the middle of Christ Jesus, right here. And what God does, the Lamb does, on earth as it is in heaven. And what the Lamb does, David does down in the world, on earth as it is in heaven. The highest heaven and earth, heaven of this universe and the earth. Okay. Okay. So at simultaneously, that's what I was just telling you. On earth as it is in heaven, David's doing it on the earth. The Lamb's doing it in heaven, which is the center of the earth of Genesis one one. As things are happening in heaven, the highest heaven of Genesis one one. I know it's kind of complicated. You got, you got. It seems like you have too many heavens and too many earths, but you don't. You have the right number. That's why there's. David and Solomon know about heaven and the highest heaven. 1 Kings chapter 8, verse 26 and 27. Look directly over at figure 2 on the same plane as the two heirs. You find the body of Moses in the sea of glass. That's what I was just showing you. And the lamb, the center of the throne, and the body of Elijah standing on the invisible sea. The key here is that all being baptized into Moses in time includes all men, all living. Take that back to Genesis 3. Um, and the first and the last, and the last is first. Okay, so now the man called his wife Eve because she was mother of all the living. Just like all are being baptized into Moses, you see. And the Lord God made garments of skin for Adam and his wife, and he clothed them. That's whenever they went from being heavenly to being earthly. From the heaven where the lamb is in the center of the throne, that's where Adam and Eve were. Revelation 7, 17, that's lambs in the center of the throne. Adam and Eve were in that environment. And then they were cast onto the earth part, from the blood witness part, heaven, to the earth part, water. And then the way was guarded back. You can't get back to the heavenly part. You're stuck down here on the earth. That's the way it works. Lord God is the Lamb of God and from the center of the throne who formed Adam in Genesis 2-7 to begin his heavenly incarnation with Eve. Heavenly incarnation still. And her seed very much in him. Adam named everything to be named to sit down and become bored until the Lord God removed Eve from his um, removed Eve from his died, it's supposed to be side, to fashion his water witness helper. Made a mistake right there, didn't I? Should be side. Moses' um, name means drawn, which on the surface is connected to being drawn out of the Nile River. God's three witnesses are teaching us using the types of Moses as a skin for our mother Eve, who was drawn from Adam's side in the beginning. Moses, Moses stands in the water witness helper position of the Levitical priest that had to see death before entering the promised land, where the Jordan River is the veil standing and testifying between earth and heaven. It is for men to die once and then the judgment. And Moses' experience is typical of a man that must die to go to heaven. But Elijah is a spirit witness who did not see death being taken to heaven in the chariot of fire, as I mentioned earlier. Boil these things down in the Mount of Trans uh, Transfiguration scene shows Eve, Moses, all the living, in her water witness body, while Adam testifies for the angels representing the greater spiritual half, that should be 
half, H-A-L-F, of Peter, John, and James, and each kingdom disciple standing on the sea of glass before the throne. While this explanation will seem like a stretch to some, God gives us other clues about these three begotten witnesses, Adam, Christ the Son of God, and Eve, testifying throughout God's word. Moses wants, wanted to see the Lord God's glory. That was forbidden. But the Lord God said, I will put you in the cleft of the rock and cover you with my hand until I, until I have passed by. The Lord God could easily agree that Moses would go and climb inside the cleft of the rock, but that would not serve to teach the types that include the rock, the cleft, which is a crevice of the rock, and the Lord's hand. The Hebrew term for cleft is used here to represent a small, narrow opening, too small for anyone to physically enter, which typifies the opening made in Adam's side, where the same Lord's hand was used to draw and fashion Eve, the mother of all living, that Moses represents. Boil these things down to realize why the gospel of the kingdom must go to the whole world and then the end will come. Salvation comes from the Jews from the perspective of the gospel of the kingdom because the Gentile nations are all called to God via this water witness good news message extended to all living as a, manner, as a matter of biblical prophecy. Christ's statement in John 4.22 has no application to the gospel the gospel of the grace of God, where God calls Gentiles to himself through the foolishness of the message preached directly into Christ, apart from the law, and apart from anything to do with Israel who committed the transgression. Continue reading in Matthew 17 from verse 8 to verse 13 to realize the Lord God is making a bold pronouncement of his prophecy that Elijah will return and restore all things, and that we will be closer to an understanding of the mystery of Adam. As the disciples asked him, why then do the scribes say that Elijah must come first? And he answered and said, Elijah is coming and he will restore all things. But I say to you, Elijah already came and they did not recognize him, but did to him whatever they wished. So also the Son of Man is going to suffer at their hands. Then the disciples understood that he had spoken to them about John the Baptist. Okay. Jesus Christ had already taught the disciples that John the Baptist was Elijah who is to come. Matthew eleven fourteen. Both Elijah and John the Baptist are described in God's word as wearing skins, leather belt, etc. Because both Elijah and John the Baptist are incarnations of our father Adam placed in human skins back in Genesis three twenty one. And after Eve is shown being mother of all living. Read from, from the Matthew 17 passage just above again to realize the disciples understood that the Lord was speaking to them about John the Baptist. But the part left out is that they did not recognize him as their father Adam. They didn't realize that he was David. He was Abraham. He was Elijah. He's, he's all these characters put together as one. He's there to testify to his obedient and disobedient children. The mystery of Christ and God's mystery are both taught in God's word like the body of Moses and the body of Christ. However, the missing link learned only through the types is that the water witness mystery is mentioned nowhere in the scriptures like the body of Elijah, testifying for all the angels in the heavens. Let us take things to the next level using a similar diagram with more of the components Pardon me, with more of the components filled in to see the larger picture. This is from page 309 of my book, The Mystery Explained. And by the way, when you subscribe to this program, you're going to get the ebook version of my book, The Mystery Explained, with 80 color coded diagrams for free. The mystery of Christ includes the summing up of all things in Christ that Paul continues describing in Ephesians 3 1 through 11, where all things includes the heavens, heaven, and the earth from Genesis. That's uh, 1, 6 through 8. That's the waters above, waters below. Heaven is the expanse. And then in uh, 2 Peter 3, 5, that the escapes are noticed that the heavens ex existed long ago and the earth was formed out of and by water. Water witness, right over here. Spirit witness, water witness. Heavens where the angels are. Earth where the men are. 
Okay, so look at the diagram to realize the lamb positioned directly in the center of the throne in New Jerusalem. This is after Genesis, I mean, Revelation 21.1. Okay, that's the thing you got to realize. You're looking at the new heaven, this, and this should be singular. I even made the mistake in my diagram. It's singular. Heaven and earth. New heaven, new earth. Okay, look um, at the diagram to realize the lamb positioned directly in the center of the throne in New Jerusalem is doing the works of restoration in heaven in the exact same way God is restoring the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. That's from the previous diagram. See, this is the same altars, same diagram as I showed you before, but it shows David now on the earth doing exactly what the Lamb's doing in heaven. So the Lamb is spreading his tabernacle over these. God is throwing his tabernacle over these. David is putting his tabernacle over these on earth as it is in heaven on earth as it is in heaven then yes it appears to be a little bit confusing here on earth as it is in heaven when there's a highest heaven and there's a regular heaven and there's an earth and then this is the earth of this witness this from genesis 1 1 right but that's how god teaches his sons and he keeps the secret away from the sons of disobedience it's the way scripture is written to be interpreted in a thousand different ways but once you see it once you see the three witnesses then all the mystery fades away you can see it very very clearly the older you get in Christ the new nature the new man that's inside of you which eat which mirrors this diagram we're gonna get into that in, in later series then uh, it's the new inner man in you Christ in you that begins as the baby in the manger and you feed it scripture, feed it scripture, feed it. You read the Bible once, you read the Bible twice, you read the Bible three times. You read Pauline epistles once, twice, three, fifty times, a hundred times. Like I did. And over the, it's going back to the 70s, 1970s. And you do that, you read it every day. And, it, and you, the new nature in you is renewed every single day. And you grow up to be able to see these things. Then choose your tutor wisely, your tutors in Christ wisely. Because you can pick a good one, you can pick a bad one. You can get sound doctrine or you can get bad doctrine. And once you get your foundational uh, doctrinal things established, it's difficult to change them. Ask many, ask Brian. Ask whenever, now you see the three witnesses, it's difficult to unlearn the things that you've learned through denominationalism. Okay? On earth as it is in ha heaven. Okay, so David's doing the same thing down here on the earth that the Lamb's doing in heaven. This is where the Christ kingdom is right here. It's not of, of this world. And it's not even of this realm. Christ kingdom's up here. Heavenly places in Christ Jesus. That's Christ's heavenly kingdom. The Lamb is here doing the same things that are being done up here. So that's the thing to realize. So our existence is here. We are citizens of heaven. You have obeyed the gospel. You're a citizen of this realm. But you're down here as an ambassador. You have incarnated from here. We are an almost infinite. You're almost infinite son of God up here. You are an infinite son of God in the infinite realm. Almost infinite here. Finite here. As a member of the Lamb's body, you still have an incarnation that's up here. And the side... These look like the same size in this diagram, but they're not. This is almost infinite. This is like a teeny drop of water compared to that whole realm. Currently, whenever heaven and earth are remade, see there's a new heaven and the new earth, Revelation 21.1, the earth is going to be continued and heaven. Both of these realms that are created are going to continue to be remade over and over and over and over and over again, hundreds of times, more than a thousand times. That many ages, it's, that's what it requires for the restoration of all things. That's the beginning with Elijah when he, we're going to be raptured and Elijah's going to come down to start it off. But that restoration process goes to the ages of the ages. So that's the thing to realize. Okay. Then, um, let's see. There's uh, no longer any death done away with in the final judgment of Revelation 20, 14 through 15. So whenever death is thrown away, how do people go to heaven? You have to die to go to heaven, right? 
wrong. In the future, people are going to live to be like in the days of, of uh, before the days of Noah. Thousands of years old. They're not going to, we're not going to die anymore. People walking around the earth, not going to die anymore. They're going to serve before David's throne. And whenever they become mature, they're going up Jacob's ladder. Mount Moriah to the Sea of Glass, connected. David's throne, it's going to be a ceremony. People are going to be deemed mature. They're ripe and ready. Up they go. And they're going to stay, end up on the same sea of glass with Peter, John, and James serving before the, the Lamb. And they're going to work, and they're going to work, and they're going to work, and they're going to work. Intercessors. All the citizens of heaven need intercession, like a priest. Which, it's more, these priests are more like attorneys they're brought before the lamb they're to be judged right just imagine king david and the uh, women haggling over who, who who's belongs to this baby and david says well give me the baby he said i'm gonna rip the baby and give you half and give you half and, and the one that the mother that really loved it says no don't kill my baby uh, he would she would rather give it to the other woman than for her baby to be killed Right, so then David knew which one really loved that baby, so he gave it to the right one. So, but the neither of the women, which would be citizens of heaven, I mean, would speak directly to the lamb. They have to have the priest do that. So the priest familiarizes himself with the case, comes before the lamb, and then submits it for them. And then get the lamb gives the priest the verdict, and then they go back and tell them how things shook out. That's the way it works up in heaven. We're in the lamb doing the judging. We judge the world and the angels. 1 Corinthians chapter 6, 2 and 3. Peter, John, and James are given the inter are the intercessors. That's part of the whole purpose of God. He has to have a bride and he has to have a body. Judges and intercessors. Okay. Now everyone, the mystery of Christ includes the summing up of all things in Christ that Paul is describing in Ephesians 3, 1 through 11. All things includes the heaven, seven, and earth. I already showed you that. That paragraph. Everyone on the planet serves David on his throne to eventually join the priests, the water witnesses, or the prophets, the spirit witnesses, until they reach maturity. Each mature member is sent up Jacob's ladder. That's what I was just explaining to you. Okay, so they can be judged by us. The world, Eve, body of Moses. Angels, Adam, body of Elijah. Okay, to see if they qualify to participate in the marriage supper of the Lamb. That's how Israel, who eventually got gobbles up the whole world, every, they're coming to the Lord, to God, through the Lord, through Israel. We bypass that by obeying our gospel. But our gospel won't be preached after the rapture. There's only going to be the gospel of the kingdom. So everybody, all those people that are martyred later in the timeline, they're going to stand up with Peter, John, and James on the Sea of Glass. They don't die and go to heaven. They don't die and go into Sheol and the earth anymore. They are going to be martyred, and they're going to join Peter, John, and James on the Sea of Glass until the last one gets there. Great Tribulation, Revelation 7, start at verse 14. And that equates to what's going on in Matthew 24, start at 21. Okay, so another key for understanding the mystery of Adam requires us to recognize the two identities of the two olive trees of Zechariah. Then I said to him, what are these two olive trees on the right of the lampstand and on its left? And I answered the second time and said to him, what are the, the two olive branches which are beside the golden pipes, which empty the golden oil from, um, from themselves? So he answered me, saying, Do you know who these are? And he said, No, oh, my Lord, I don't know who they are. Then he said, These are the two anointed ones who are standing by the Lord of the whole earth. You see, there's, this again is the on earth as it is in heaven thing. On earth as it is in heaven. There's a heavenly counterpart up there. The two olive trees, Adam and Eve. Well, their lamp stands in heaven, their olive trees on the earth. Adam and Eve are the ones that keep coming over and over and over again. When Elijah is coming to restore all things, Adam's coming to restore all things. All things. He's David. He's Abraham. He's all in one. He's the prophet, priest, and king of the earth, just like Christ is the prophet, priest, and king of heaven. So when the Lord God made Adam, he made the first Adam being, and the Lord God is the last Adam. 
So the Lord God is like the soul, and the, what he, the, the man he formed is the body. Heaven making earth, God making the earth through his word, that's the same thing that's happening. Some people think that Genesis 2 is a, re, a replay of what happened in Genesis 1. It's not. The Lord God is creating, but on the smaller scale. Not the whole universe, the heaven and the earth, just of this local realm right here, where we're at right now. Okay, so the Lord of the whole earth is the Lord God, the Lamb of God, Christ. These two witnesses, these two, two anointed ones, are the only other two begottens in the entire Bible. Adam was, he doesn't have a belly button. He was made. Eve, she don't have a belly button either. Pulled out of Adam and made, fashioned, formed. Those are the two anointed ones right there, and they keep coming again and again. When you go back and look at the father, being Abraham, that's Adam. Sarah is the mother. David, Abraham. I mean, uh, um, Adam. Bathsheba is Eve. So Bathsheba in the, in the, she, she's bathing. She's taking the bath over here. Bathsheba, she's in the, right? She's taking her bath. David's over here in Caesar. David is the heavens looking over across the veil into the earth. And then they're joining together. You're seeing the same story of Elijah and Moses played out again. Okay. So there are the exceptions to the rule of Hebrews 9.27. They're the two olive trees, the exception, they're only two. See, Jesus Christ is the only begotten Son of God. Adam is the only begotten Son of the Word, who's one with God. So, he, I mean, he's the only other person in the Bible that's going to be called the Son of God. Because Adam is the Son of God of the earth. Christ is the Son of God of heaven. There's one for each realm. God is king over his realm. Christ, king over his realm. Guess who's king over the earth realm? Uh, David. He's going to be king forever. And he's, uh, some people want to bring Christ down and have him rule on, on his footstool. And that's not happening. That's why he made the man. So here's just a short list because there's more than these. Adam and Eve are the first. Noah is a skin for Eve. Abraham, Sarah, Adam and Eve. Moses, Joshua. Joshua is the one that was able to pass only two of all of the sons of Israel that left Pharaoh, left Egypt. Only two made it across the Jordan River. Joshua and Caleb. And Caleb means dog. And what you're looking at is a type of Christ, the deliverer. Joshua, the Christ. With his Caleb, with his dog, with his Gentile body going through the heavenly veil. That's a type of us, which nobody in, uh, of Israel would have known that until after Paul was given the information and then he explained it to him. Okay, so David, Bathsheba, John the Baptist is another skin for our father Adam. That's why there's none greater born of women than John the Baptist. He the first man. But you notice Christ has qualified himself as even being a man. Of being born of woman because he was conceived of the Holy Spirit. He was made. Just like Melchizedek. That's why when it's written of Melchizedek, he was made in the likeness of son of man. That's Christ. Because neither of them have a beginning or an end in this realm. They're both from the heaven realm. So David in Ezekiel 34, that's Adam. He's going to be cut off. He's Messiah the Prince from Daniel 9, 24 through, 26, uh, to, uh, through 27. He's going to be cut off. But then he's going to be installed again. If you, you see David installed as Prince in Ezekiel 34 and then in, again in forever. This is Revelation 21, New Earth, where Adam is David and he's going to, He's going to be the king. The whole universe. Visible universe. That's the same thing the Lamb's going to do in heaven. The two witnesses of Revelation 11. Look at the powers of the two witnesses to realize. And some people think that it's Elijah and Moses. 
most of the people that are listening to the sound of my voice believe that the, the two witnesses are Elijah and Moses, and you're wrong. Because it's Adam and Eve. Adam and Eve, Elijah and Moses are two skins of Adam and Eve. That's what the mystery of Adam is all about. Realizing who's the first, who's the last, Moses, Elijah and Moses. Realize these characters are all first and last, first and last. And there are only three begotten: Christ, the only begotten of heaven, and then Adam and Eve, the only begotten of the earth. There are only three of them. And there's witnesses, they, they have, there are three witnesses of spirit, blood, and water, just like I showed you above. And that's basically what I'm telling you right here. Noah and Moses, and everybody being baptized into Moses. Just read this from this passage right here. And you'll see all the water witness signs baptized into the sea. Drink the same spiritual drink. It's got water all just dripping with water, just like Moses. It's a water witness. David, in both of the, in Ezekiel 34 and 37, represent two more skins for our father Adam, being cut off near the end of the age, as Messiah the Prince, 62 weeks, 434 years to the end of the age. So what that means is it's going to be 3,600 years, if you know what the Black Star reports are about, one orbit cycle of the Black Star is 3,600 years. So Black Star is almost here right now, and it's going to come again in 3,600 years. So you can see by looking at these numbers of Daniel that Messiah the Prince, David, is going to rule for a little over 3,000 years. And he's going to be killed when there's 434 years to go. He's going to be cut off. He's going to have his head cut off again. Just like John the Baptist and Herod. It's going to happen to him again. But there's a reason that it's happening again. Because we're replaying things already done. In Ecclesiastes 1, 9 through 11. We're doing things already done in the infinite realm. When Satan murdered Adam in the first place. We're the members of his body. We're all being restored. Okay, the only way that Adam can come back near the at after this point, when the gospel of the kingdom goes to the whole world and everybody's up there on the sea of glass, it's going to leave the world full of Satan's children. And guess who's going to testify for him? The two witnesses of Revelation 11, and it's going to be Adam and Eve. The only way that he can come back as one as one of the two witnesses is to he's got to be cut off, Messiah the Prince. David. He's going to die. He's going to come back again and testify to him. And then, guess what? The Antichrist kills him again. But then, the, their bodies lay in the streets for three and a half days. And then, the Lord God raises them up right there on the street. And then, they ascend to heaven right in front of everybody. It must really scare the crap out of them. everybody. You know, their people are giving presents to each other because of these two witnesses that are such a pain in the neck. Fire and brimstone they've been bringing down. They've, everybody's been scared of them. But you know why? Because they've got the same powers of Elijah and Moses. Who have the same exact powers of the original garden pair. The original cultivators of the land. They can burn the land off. They can make it rain. They can make it not rain. They can do, they got all these powers that Moses and Elijah have. Put them together. And these, you put together Moses and Adam. I mean, Moses and Elijah, all their powers in one person. That's Adam in Genesis 2-7. For Eve was taken from his side. That's the way it works. So God's mystery is Christ himself. And that all things in God's infinite realm and earth. That's earth of Genesis 1-1. Are being restored in heaven. That is the word where all things were, are held together in him. Colossians 1-17. It's made by him, made for him, and it's made in him. And in him all things hold together. I showed you that uh, diagram that looks like an egg. The mystery of Christ concerns all things in the heavens and earth, being summed up in heaven, and particularly in the Lamb who takes away the sins, sin of the world. The mystery of Adam concerns everything the Lamb is doing happening simultaneously on the earth, where Adam is the body, witness, king, of the blood witness king, like the lamb, in the center of the throne between the priest and the prophets, like you see in the diagram up there, during the upcoming day of the Lord for all the ages to come. Every host in this universe eventually serves Adam, David's throne, to become mature 
and make the trip up Jacob's Ladder until the universe is empty. This is the ages of the ages. This is oh, way down the road. And the heavens are empty of the angels. There's no more men. There's no more angels because they've all been fashioned back together again. If that sounds kind of crazy, go back to Genesis 1.1. Where there's, the, in the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. Well, that earth, there were no such thing as angels. There were no such thing as men or women. They were all singularity hosts, just like Adam of Genesis 2-7. Singularities. Nobody was born. Nobody died. Whenever the earth was made void, that is whenever the waters from above were separated from the waters below. Darkness was upon the face of the deep. But then whenever they overlapped again, heaven was begotten. All the things that are being restored from the heavens and the earth are summed up in heaven. That's what the mystery process means. Mystery includes three witnesses and includes baptism into something, into the blood witness. Spirit witnesses and water witnesses are always baptized into the blood witness to become one again. And so eventually the Son becomes the Word. Well, when the Son becomes the Word again, there's no more Father, there's no more Holy Spirit. They're done. There's a beginning and there's an end for the Word and heaven. And in the beginning, heaven, in the end, becomes heaven again, the restored heaven. But there's no Father, Son, and Holy Spirit anymore. That's the important part. With men, there's going to be no more spirit, soul, and body either. The body's going to be invisible like the Spirit's invisible, and all you're going to see is the soul. People walking around in a soul, and they're going to be walking around in a soul universe that's not broken like this one that we're in right now okay so every host in this universe eventually serves adam and his throne makes up makes the trip up jacob's ladder until the universe is empty of the of the of men and the heavens are empty of angels only then does adam david take one last look at his kingdom that spans the visible universe to turn around for making the trip up Jacob's ladder to heaven. He's the last. He's, he was the first man made. He's going to be the last one up that ladder. Guaranteed you. He continues his trek into the Lamb. Where he emerges in Christ Jesus as in the highest heaven. To continue his trek. Through the second veil. Separating heaven from the from God's infinite realm. Adam and the Lord who, make, who made him walk side by side. Through the second veil. Looking at one another with big smiles until passing through the veil the last Adam and the first Adam become one restored God returning in glory to the only realm that is real with all the members of his body restored um, with all of their uh, all members of their restored body intact only then will we see the reality of all these things that Satan murdered Adam and God restored his son of God that from our infinite realm perspective flashes before us in the flash of a single instant. So we're gods and God's infinite realm and all this time and space stuff doesn't even exist from our perspective there. Adam's murdered by Satan and God causes Adam to be restored to stand back up again. Satan is dealt with, cut off from the infinite realm. All that from our perspective over there happens in a flash. From our perspective here, it takes ages and ages and ages and ages. All this time is going to pass. While from the infinite realm perspective, we're there right now in God's courtroom being judged, frozen, motionless. We are within two, I mean, we don't have heartbeats there like we do here, but between two heartbeats. We are all frozen there. And at the end of the age, we're going to be frozen in the same instant. That it is now. That it has been from the beginning. Nothing changes when you come out the infinite realm into time and space. That whole realm stays frozen, motionless for the entire period you're gone. So when we get back, Adam, he's going to be dead. He's going to be alive. And there's only going to be a split second. It's like waking up, like one night's sleep. And then waking up, boom. That's the way it is from his perspective. So that's the, the mystery of Adam. It kind of follows God's mystery. Follows the mystery of Christ, summing up of all things. Okay? It's just that Adam, his identity is concealed in the Holy Scriptures. And whenever you look at the Holy Scriptures as a man, Old Testament, Pauline Epistles, 
and the uh, kingdom New Testament 39 13 13 the book of Acts is this first veil it has blue parts that are water uh, the kingdom doctrine for kingdom disciples and it has mystery parts gospel of the grace of God for the members of Christ's body but it's this invisible veil see this veil is a book this veil is a person this veil right here separates the Old Testament and the New Testament. Look at the last two verses of the Old Testament. Where I will send you Elijah the prophet. He will restore the hearts of the fathers to children, and hearts of the children to their fathers, lest I come and smite the land with a curse. The last word of the Old Testament is curse. All right. So what do you see in Mark 1? John the Baptist clearing the way. Voice in the wilderness. He has uh, wearing camel hair and a leather belt. The leather belt is, is symbolic of this blood witness. Whenever it first begins, when you first, when you have the waters above and the waters below, they're not touching darkness upon the face of the deep. The face of the deep is the last two places these circles touch. Like a round circle. That's the face of the deep. And then whenever it touches again, you have the small little area where they first touch the face of the deep being restored and then at the very beginning this spirit witness is very very big this what was water witness is very very big too the blood witness is only a sliver when it first starts that sliver is the belt made of leather it's tying everything together in the middle of the man right spirit witness above when you read my book then you're going to see that that we have Three power centers above and three power centers below and one, the heart chakra. That's in the middle, right? And that's the center right here in the middle of this realm. It's right here where uh, the sun dwells, where Christ dwells in us. Okay, so that's what I wanted to show you there. Mystery Report News is, uh, and I'm, I, uh, not going to be um, whining about being banned and things like that. I, again, I think that it's important for you to realize when you go out there just like I did, that you're not necessarily, when you have the truth about the three witnesses, then those blinded by nominationalism are going to make you to be their heretic, and they're going to take it out on you. But if you're going to be worthy of the glory of God, by participating as a member of Christ's body, then you're going to be smacked down like he was, like John the Baptist was. In Christ, you're going to be spat upon. People are going to hate you. That's just the way it goes. First, um, I just put this up here. This is where I was. And uh, whenever I posted this, just posted the uh, Mystery of Adams, like I showed you, nobody's commented on that yet. Hundreds of people wrote, have read it, but they are not... Uh, able to respond on it then the, here are the previous ones you know it just kind of shows you that I am not just present posting the work the work up there that I'm there defending my opening post see that what I just read to you is this opening post right here now everybody's encouraged to read and come and give you me you know give me your comments if you see something off you want to correct me quote it off we go so we had our, our uh, first official chat last Tuesday evening we're going to do it again tonight you can you subscribe right now when you see this and it's not seven o'clock Eastern time yet you can still join us there I'll get you the information in your notification email and remember it's only fifty dollars per year it's like four bucks a month to have the premium program if you just want to get these newsletters then it's only two bucks a month okay and then and there's a I mean, these two, these are the two buttons, just like Black Star. Watch that video. Now that video is here for um, the mystery report. This link right here at the website. That's where you want to click. Then this is the the two bucks a month program, twenty five dollars per year, fifty dollars per year. It's just one payment per year. That's all it is, and you're good to go. You got all of this year's newsletters. You can meet us every Tuesday. Love to have you there. How do you join the chat room activities? So you receive, I mean, right in your notification, notification email, it says, go here to register. Here is a link. You go there and you register. And then uh, 
what I recommend is that you watch some videos you can just Google them and using that particular chat format you know it's uh, you raise you, you hit a button and you come up and, up and raise your hand I didn't open it up for this week the uh, room just to show you so uh, clarifying statements this is a this is this newsletter gets 10 times more commentary than you get out of the Black Star Report newsletters and this it's just labor intensive defending your statements back and forth he's, now this guy right here this guy's a pain in the neck he, he uses distraction he attacks he uses straw man arguments and when if you don't have a if you're not a strong debater with sound doctrine and things you have to develop these other skills as a debater and so this they distract they uh, do all kinds of crazy things here he is this is all occultic cabalism um, it should be rejected by every Bible believing Christian. Yeah, right. So there, there are thousands of different denominations. And this guy's allowed to believe whatever he wants to believe and to share with everybody, but I'm an exception. That's, this is pr precisely what I'm, this is his entire, I'm not going to, I, I mean, I want to be fair and balanced, right? Like Fox News say they are, even though they're not. So the, um, I'm not going to break up. You're going to be able to read what he's saying. His attacks on me. This mystical approach totally regards the elementals of textual interpretation, blah, blah, blah. In other words, if it's a mystery, that's what my book's about. And God's hidden wisdom. If God hides it from, from the sons of darkness, he even hides it from the sons of God, those that are saved. Members of Christ's body. Remember, there are still babes in Christ that are fleshy. They can't see God's wisdom. It's the mature members of Christ's body that can grow up and see these things. And most of the mature members of Christ's body were born 2,000 years ago in Paul's day. Timothy, Titus, Barnabas, those guys. Now we're at the base of the pyramid where there's more of us, but they're the more common stones. So it's, this is, I mean, it's tricky this is almost like the Matrix. If, you, if you're familiar with the movie, you can't show anybody the mystery. They have to see it for themselves. So I, I'm, I can show you these diagrams and everything, but the new inner man that's inside of you has to see it and then show you from the inside. That's the way that it works. So that's why you're encouraged when you're using my book, The Mystery Explained, that you actually draw out the diagrams yourself. Draw the overlapping circles. It's really important that you do that. If you're going to take shortcuts, you're never going to get there. There is no shortcut. You make your own red folder between God's Word, who is the Spirit Witness, and my book, The Mystery Explained, that's the Water Witness. It's only a servant. My book is only a servant to the Word. But it's your red book that you build in the middle with these different sections. That, as, you're, as that's developing, and you're actually drawing out the diagrams yourself, you can use, you can use crayons, colored pencils. Spirit, blood, and water. Then the lights come on from the inside. Those, then you start getting this giddiness even. I, I can hear it in Kathy's voice. I can hear it in, uh, in Tina's voice. I can hear it in Brian's voice and in, in uh, others that are in the program. So th th these are the skeptics, and I think it's very important that I present to you every, each week my opening posts for these discussions but that's not the whole story there there are the people like this that can't see it they're going to come and they're going to they're going to send a barrage of reasons why this just can't be and so it's the way that i am thanking him and being courteous kind and then not quite quite the opposite blah 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 and then i'm going to help you because i've been doing this a long time before anybody invented the internet that I was doing this through pen and paper and the U.S. Post Office and writing people around the world going back and forth on these things. The um, Andrew Tong in the uh, 1990s, Countering Biblical Contradictions. The website is not up anymore. I was so heartbroken whenever he took it down. We thought it was going to be there forever. I wrote 30,000 posts there. There are no contradictions in the Bible. 
But if that, I sure wish it was there today so that you could, I could send you there as a resource so that you could read from my 30,000 posts explaining how, no, that's not a contradiction. People would challenge me and they call me the thread killer. The thread killer. What that means is, let me go up here a bit. That means, like this, you see this pre pre uh, pre-trib discussion? Let's come on down. Pre-trib discussion. January 6th was the last writing on it. Now, this is going to go to the archives. This is, once the thread killer gets on there and gives the answer, nobody has to write anymore. That's it. So it just goes down to the archives, and my name's on the last one. That's why they called me the thread killer. If you came to the board, the counter, Countering Biblical Contradictions board, then you would look down to the bottom of the page of the dead threads, the ones that are going to the archives. See, the new threads start on top up here. My name would be on beside almost every one of them. This, and that was back in the in the 80s and 90s, back in the 90s, before before I ever joined this Bible board back in 2014. I mean, I'm sorry, 2004. So this is where you can find me. And I'm there mostly on Sundays and Mondays, mostly. Um, anytime over the weekend, whenever I can get a break from doing that's the things that, I, that that just have to be done around here. There's a lot going on here and in, in the trailer hood. Um, I don't necessarily need to get into all that. So um, Rebecca. Rebecca is a subscriber. Subscribers for this week, th this is, they're 18 members now. And four subscribed this week. Stephen, Rebecca, this is Rebecca from Survival Group Lady, so Rebecca, John, and Peaches. Okay. And then Rebecca showed up to our last chat. It looked to me like she was having issues with getting her mic set up or something like that. She was in there for a little while. And my apologies again. Whenever we, whenever 7 o'clock came, and then it was myself and like, I uh, I think Tanya was there, and then she left and came back, and it looked like that we might need not even have a meeting. But then people were showing up, and I forgot to hit the record button again. I'm going to try to remember tonight at 7 o'clock, I'm going to try to remember to set up the record button. And another kind of, um, I don't know, unusual thing is that nobody else wanted to come up to the mic and say anything. So we had a, like a half dozen, about half of our group that was that were there. Um, after we got rolling, and I was the only one that was doing the talking, which, hey, that's that's fine, because you can type your questions. That's the way we were doing it. And another thing that I've noticed is we're not necessarily writing on the topic of the week, of what that topic of the week is, whether it's the the uh, the two Gospels, the two churches, you know, getting the foundation right. If you guys aren't asking me questions, I'm assuming that you have it down pat, just like any teacher would. And then we're going to go to the next thing. Okay. So if there are questions on the two gospels, the two churches, the four baptisms, the differences between Jesus Christ, Christ Jesus, God, my father art in heaven. Do you have that soundly is down pat? The God's Bible code, spirit, blood, and water from last week. And now the mystery of Adam. As it compares to the mystery of Christ and God's mystery. You see? So if there are things... It's important that you ask the questions if there are th if there are things that are kind of shaky, you, you th things you don't see. It's by your questions, you you show me what you can't see. By your line of questions, I can tell. I've been doing this a long time, but it's important, very important that you ask the questions. Otherwise, I'm going to assume you got it, and we're going to go on to the next thing. So, how do we join the chat room activities? Answer right here. How do you receive Mystery Report newsletters? These two buttons at the website. My clarifying statements. This is uh, this is where I was, and you can see the two gospels. So this fellow right here, he he does not recognize the gospel, of the kingdom as a gospel message. Many many people that, that say there's one gospel, they think Christ shed blood. Our gospel for today, Paul's gospel, is the only gospel, and they insist on that, and they like they're going to make you into their her heretic if you try to tell them different. Thing is. Whenever you go back to Mark 1, 1 through 14, Jesus Christ is there preaching the quote-unquote gospel of God, 
right? That's how Peter, John, and James got saved. So how in the world did Peter, John, and James get saved if the only gospel is the gospel of Christ shed blood? Because according to what you're saying, Peter, John, and James couldn't be possibly be saved, couldn't have their sins forgiven until after Christ died. Well, he's sending them out to preach the gospel of the kingdom and in Matthew 10, how can he, how, Christ is sending unsaved people to go get saved people? Doesn't make any sense, does it? Because the gospel of the kingdom is the gospel that saved Peter, John, and James that Israel rejected. And that's what Romans chapter 11, start at 7 is all about. Those who were chosen obtained it. And the rest were hardened. So the Pharisees, the, the Sanhedrin, the lawyers, the scribes, the hypocrites, they didn't receive it. Israel rejected the gospel of the kingdom. That's why God raised up Paul and sent the, the good news of Christ shed blood to the Gentiles to make them jealous. But you had to have one rejected first before the blood witness. This is typical of what we see with the, uh, and, and Christ mentions it several times, that the first, the last comes first and the first is last. The first is last and the last is first. That is a reference to what comes after the spirit witness. Spirit witness came first. Okay, Elijah came first. So then, God begins working with the gospel of the kingdom in Israel. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. John the Baptist, Christ, and the Twelve. Ministry of the Holy Spirit. Blasphemy of the Holy Spirit is, is rejecting the gospel of the kingdom for the third and final time. Three strike thing. I think God's a baseball fan. Three strikes. They they allowed John to die in prison. They demanded Christ's death. Crucify him, crucify him, crucify him. And then they killed Stephen with his, their own hands. Cut to the quick. They jumped on him with one accord. Boom, you're dead. Stephen, his name means crown. They rejected the crown of the gospel of the kingdom. And then right on the very site, there's Saul. He's taken the garments. On those garments were seals. The seals tell the name of the person, the family of the person, what he does for a living, everything. You could take a man's garment and look at it and tell who he was. Because it had all the insignias on it. Same thing in heaven. That's the type of things that are in heaven. When you look at your brother and they have a chest plate on, has records of their deeds. You can tell who they are, what they did and everything by looking at the garments. Well, then, the blood witness, Christ came in water and in blood. The day of the Lord isn't going to happen until back here. The day of the Lord actually began over here with John the Baptist. But since Israel rejected it, it's the kingdom is held in abeyance. So you got this 2,000-year mystery time that the Old Testament prophets couldn't see. They cannot see in here. It's between the two veils. This is laid out exactly like the tabernacle that I just showed you before. And this is a timeline. And we are just about to go into this day of the Lord. The rapture is just about to happen. Boom. Then the Holy Spirit comes back. And this starts all over again. John the Baptist is going to, Elijah is going to be on the, the, the banks of the, of the Jordan River. All right. On the west side. He's going to baptize all Israel and then take them across into the promised land. The day of the Lord that should have started here didn't start because the first the water witnesses were made last and the last the blood witnesses were made first that's it in a nutshell if you're going to mix the kingdom and the blood if you're going to mix the water and the blood ministries of christ together you don't see a kingdom dispensation peter john and james the gospel of the kingdom and this grace period the blood part you just don't see it so this fellow is going to bring up his uh you seem ignorant. He shouldn't have said that. So one thing I'm not, even my critics will tell you, I'm not an ignorant person. And this, you don't want to try to handle me by calling me ignorant. That's not going to happen. And then uh, that's what I remind people that whenever you write on my post, as soon as you hit the reply button, then you you can't be a judge anymore. You're a participant in the debate. The readers are the ones who judge. I give mine, you give yours, we both do our best, everybody can decide. But I cannot judge you 
and you can't judge me. You can't judge my work. You can just make your case. You make your case, and then everybody else decides that, oh, this terrible guy, he's, he really knows what he's talking about. Or they say, that terrible guy, he's an idiot. This guy knows what he's talking about. That's the way that it works. Lots of commentary. So you get to see the objections to what I'm sharing, and then you get to see my clarifying statements. That's what this section is all about. This is the longest section. See, it begins by going back to my original opening posts that I'm doing every week. Use the diagrams. That's the one that I used in that presentation. And this just, I mean, lots and lots and lots of my commentary going down here. Two Gospels of the New Testament. Here's the thread, the opening post. And then this is the Bramble Wild. I asked him a question. I said, okay, he says there's one gospel. I said, okay, is that the gospel of the kingdom, the Christ priest right out of the starting gate? Or is it the gospel of the grace of God? Which is it? Which is your one gospel? And the it took me a while to finally get it out of him. But he does not recognize the gospel of the kingdom as any gospel message at all. That, that's how Peter, John, and James got saved. You have to really twist the Bible to, to say otherwise. Then this is um, the t testimonial section. A lot of these are going to stay up for you guys. This is uh, Kathy's in her vision. She wants to publish a book, write and publish a book that I'm happy to help her with if she wants me to. And whenever, where Kathy is right now is where I was back in the 80s. I can remember, I remember getting out of bed, um, Bible study every Monday night, every Monday night had to be there. And I would jump out of bed on Mondays just ripe and ready and raring to go, wanting to learn something new about God's Word. And she's got that. She's got that enthusiasm. And that's why I encourage her to write a diary. A diary. Because then you record your growth. One reason, one thing that limits my ability to be able to help you is because I'm like the professor on this. I was doing this a long, 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 long time ago. Graduated. And now I see everything so clearly that we forget that everybody else can't see it. But Kathy is relatively new to it, so she's closer to where you are than I am. So she's going to write something that is going to be more simplified, not like a college professor, but like first grade teacher, second grade teacher. And so she's going to be able to help more people than I can. Then once you graduate from what she's showing you, then you're going to be able to get more into, my, into what I'm trying to show you. I don't complicated on purpose it's just the way that I see it in order to draw these diagrams with all with all these different things there's not even a really complicated in order to draw them you have to see it clearly right and you see the like with David down on the throne and the lamb imagine the time that it takes to be able to just see it so it's well enough so that you can share it in the in, in color-coded fashion this is from Brian and he just loves the new program. He's, he's he puts on this video, and um, the way he learns, he says he learns a lot from the visual of, of doing that. Here's from Barbara, and the commitment from Kathy. And then this is where I got into well, I got uh, Galen a little bit mad at me. The thing to realize is that I'm going to call him like I see him. I'm just going to call him like I see him from the perspective of God's wisdom and his three witnesses based on my experience okay now if you have something to show just like me I'm showing you guys these things but I don't have anything but seeds that's all I have is seeds we don't we cannot open each other's heads up and drill a hole and pour in conclusions it doesn't work that way Apollos or I planted Apollos watered and God causes the growth first Corinthians 3 start at 6 that's the way it works. Seeds. So if you have seeds, Galen, you have seeds, then you sow those seeds. You send them. I want, to, I want, I want them. But at the moment that you share it, I'm going to have views on it, and I'm not necessarily going to see what you're sharing. That's why when you plant the seed and you water it, you come back tomorrow and you water it again. You come back tomorrow, you water it again, and eventually it grows. It gets shoots, and eventually you get the fruit. But we don't see it until the fruit comes. 
it takes time. So please don't get angry at me if I'm not willing to take your topic the way that you see things you, it, that developed inside of you for a long time. The thing is to be patient like a farmer. You sow the seeds like a farmer. You water like a farmer. You send more material like you. Here's the video that you sent me. That's water. You plant the seed, which is the seed of faith. And then you water and water and water. And then the growth comes. But it might not come for a year. It might come for in three months. Okay. But the answer is not to run back into the field because it didn't produce overnight and start digging it up. That's not the answer. We, we sow seeds in, in faith and in hope, expectation of a harvest. But it's important that we stick with it as planters in a field. That means getting the weeds out, pruning, doing the work of a, of a farmer until we eventually... That's what you see. You see all the words that I'm writing up here, up here in this uh, clarifying statement section. All these words, that's more seeds. That's more water. You can't just put the opening post and say, okay, you guys got it. Let's, no, it doesn't work that way. So people come up and object. They have these objections. My job is to answer the objections. Your job with me is to answer the objections. Just say, you're talking about the uh, Christ's blood coming down inside the earth and and falling on the Ark of the Covenant that happened to be right there under it and only fell on this side and this and that. It had 23 chrom chromosomes. Yeah, and so that makes Christ a man. You see, that's a stretch. There's, that's going further than by faith I can go. Okay, so... Everybody has a right to wake up in the bed and believe whatever they want to believe. And they choose the tutor. And they, they look at all the information. The problem that I have with what was presented in the video is that there's, in order to use science, because I'm a scientist too, and in order to use the science, you have to have the DNA and you have to have the, the, a, another sample of DNA for a comparison. In other words, you're going to have to have Mary's DNA to compare to this blood, because that blood could be the blood of anybody. Could the place that you're talking about, Mount Moriah, is where they kill people, they crucify them. That's what they did back in 2,000 years ago. The Romans, they didn't just do three crucifixions. They did a bunch of crucifixions. And so, the, the laws of probability. Murphy's Law, anything can happen, will happen, percentage of the time, right? Looking at it scientifically, the burden of proof is on the people that made the video, and there's a big burden there. When you're talking about going using DNA from a sample that's 2,000 years old, that's a problem. And then to be able to know 100% for sure who, who is the source of the sample. I mean, you can believe that it's Christ, and you can believe that if you want to. But to, to me, that's a stretch. To some people, God's uh, the mystery of Adam's a stretch. Right? So I bring up my objections, just like these other guys up above. They bring objections to the two Gospels, to the two churches, the four baptisms. They bring objections. That's my job to answer those objections, not to get mad at them because they don't agree with me. You see? So there's a... It's, I hope that my correspondence back and forth helps you to see my position and then the scientific what I would be looking for from the scientific perspective to consider everything in that video to be true so the people are wise to be a skeptic say oh yeah this is that to quote me and say well what about this what about this what about this be a skeptic that's nothing wrong with that that's what you're supposed to do that I'm going to do my job of providing the clarifying statements, and then you can do your job of providing the clarifying statements for the for the conclusions that you're drawing on the Bible topic. Okay, so we're, let, let's let's try to resist the urge of getting angry, and getting mad at each other, and smacking each other around. Let's let's try to avoid that. Each side should do their best to be the spiritual, to uphold and stand upon the spiritual moral high ground. That's why you see me writing to these these folks thanking them very much for writing 
right going over the top and being nice and kind to everybody as possible even though they're seething at you all right kill them with kindness and brian lives up oh yeah i'm 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 lower here oh yeah dna and then the antichrist dwells in the sons of disobedience as the temple today brian's asking me some very good questions you can learn from the questions brian's asked because he's seen he's he's seen it all pretty much been been following my work since 2013 and he's going to, he's writing me about what's going on in uh with Paul's writing to the Thessalonians. Okay, this was uh from yesterday that he wrote me and this is what I wrote just this morning before making this video. His own time. The most likely the most difficult verses you, there there's some difficult ones in 1 Corinthians uh chapters 12 through 14 that people can't get cuz it's written to the it's written to the kingdom church. It's written to the kingdom church. Paul's writing to those who are of Apollos. Those who are of Cephas. Those are that two port city is the largest congregation of believers that will be the gospel of the kingdom and the gospel of the grace of God. But they're both crammed together. Paul's addressing some in one quote and some in another. That makes it difficult to separate. It's an invisible veil that's in there and it trips up the members of Christ's body, and that's how God rewards us. He takes from some and gives to others. The ones that are wrong, uh, they lose rewards. The ones that are telling them right, that had it right, okay, they're the ones that are going to be seated higher in the pyramid, in the heavenly pyramid that's in heaven. Okay, so now, this is a very good question right here. And what is keeping down? We're talking about 2 Thessalonians 2, 6. 2 Thessalonians 2, 1 through 6, are among the most difficult to get right okay the reason is because Paul already set these people down and told everything he told them everything about the end of the age that's why in 1st Thessalonians 5 he starts off and says of the that time and epochs day of the Lord you have no need of anything to be written to you because he had just been there and he explained it all to him he knows the audience he knows he was just there he just explained it all to him so that he doesn't have to write about that that's the reason for the disconnect, the apparent seeming disconnect, because he talked to the Thessalonians in person. So he's filling in the blanks. He's not starting it from scratch. Okay? His own time is a reference to the end of the age. His own, his own time. Paul is telling them this so that he can show them what's happening today versus what's going to happen at the end of the age. What's happening today is the mystery time. Okay, so what the reason that the Antichrist can't come today, it's impossible for him to come today. It's impossible because there are things that Christ says in Matthew 24 that have to happen first. So the spirit of prophecy is what's stopping him from coming. That's what the, uh, so that he can be revealed. The spirit of prophecy, which is the Holy Spirit, is withholding him. Because first you have to have A happen. Then you have to have B happen. It's all written down in Daniel and Ezekiel. They know how it's going to happen. They know when this, the prince is going to be cut off, David. They know when he's going to cut off. Ezekiel sees how he's installed, Ezekiel 34, start at 20, uh, 23. But then Daniel sees how he's cut off. Messiah the prince, that's David. Okay, that we were talking about earlier. So to get this right, you have to realize Paul is describing in those first six verses what happens at the end of the age. That's in his time. So in Matthew 24, 15 is his time. But if you go back to Matthew 24, uh, 3, the disciples are asking him what happens regarding your coming in the end of the age. You see, the Antichrist is right there at the end of the age. Matthew 24, 15, 16. He's standing in the, he's setting up his abomination of desolation, Daniel 9, 24 through 27, in the holy place, which is between the two veils of the temple that has to be restored first by Elijah. You have the prophet has to come and restore all things first before the Antichrist can come and set up an abomination of desolation. That must come afterwards. Okay, so you can't have B happen, according to prophecy, until A happens. That's the spirit of prophecy that is withholding him. Some interpretations say restraining him. He that restrains will continue restraining until he is revealed in his own time at the end of the age. 
Now, here's the important part. They're, the Antichrist is here right now. You're not waiting for him to come. The mystery of Christ is us being baptized into Christ so that we can be seated in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Every time Paul gives you doctrinal truth about the mystery of Christ, which there's a list as long as your arm, he's giving you also information about the mystery of iniquity, the mystery of lawlessness, which is the mystery of the Antichrist. The body of Christ is over here on one side. The mystery of iniquity is on the other side. I can pull up that diagram for you. Okay. Mystery of Christ. Mystery of iniquity. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Heavenly man, Christ Jesus. We're baptized into, the, into Christ, and we're seated in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus right here. However, those who reject our gospel, those who obey false gospels, the sinner's prayer is a false gospel, Billy Graham. It's a false gospel. Just do this, and Christ will become Lord of your heart. Just say, Jesus, please be the Lord. No, it doesn't work that way. I preach to you the gospel, and you believe it, period. No works, no prayers, no nothing. No water baptism, no circumcision, no nothing. But those who accept the water baptism as the right of salvation for the forgiveness of their sins, that's the gospel of the kingdom, if you mix it in, with the word of the cross, then you defile, distort the wisdom given him, Paul, to your own destruction, Second Peter chapter 3, start at 14. Okay, so there are members that are in Christ's body, that's me, Brian, those of you that, uh, Trevor, Tina, Kathy, we're all here, Rebecca, we're here, the Antichrist are over here. This is the mystery of iniquity. They have a Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit too. They're called the beast, the devil, the antichrist, and the false prophet. You can call him the beast. You can call him the son of perdition. You can call him the man of sin. He has a lot of different names. But the members of their body are being baptized right here. This is happening right now. They're not people that are waiting for the antichrist. Come on. They're already baptized into the antichrist. They're already in the sea. They're already in the lake of fire. Right now, they're in the lake of fire like we're seated in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus. They just don't know it yet. When the rapture happens, it's not just the rapture of the righteous in Christ Jesus. It's not just the rapture of us. There's an antithesis rapture at the simultaneously. The bad people, they wake up in the lake of fire like we, are in, we, we meet the Lord in the air. They're going to meet uh, their destiny in the lake of fire. They're burning now in the lake of fire. Just like we're seated in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus, they are seated in the lake of fire right as we speak, this very second. So the thing is, stop looking for the literal fulfillment of what Paul is saying in Second Thessalonians 2, 1 through 6. It's not going to happen now. In his time, it will happen. The restrainer is the spirit of the Holy Spirit the spirit of prophecy that says A must happen before B happens before C happens before D. Christ gives you the ABC of how things shake out in Matthew 24. They're going to kill you. Verse 9. They will kill you. The gospel of the kingdom goes to the whole world. Matthew 24, 14. The Antichrist comes. Matthew 24, 15. The Great Tribulation. Matthew 24, 21. You see, these things have to happen in order. You can't have the Great Tribulation before the restoration of the kingdom. You can't have... The Antichrist going into the holy place of the temple, setting up his abomination of desolation, if the temple's not even rebuilt yet. Got to have the temple before he can defile the temple, you see. But, you see, we are a temple of the Holy Spirit. The members of the Antichrist body are the temple of that spirit of iniquity. That's what Paul's saying, and those things are at work even now. This is the time of the baptism into the antichrist like it's our baptism into christ so getting the doctrine right about the two gospels the two churches helps you get the doctrine right about the mystery of christ and the mystery of iniquity because the bible is four-dimensional paul is teaching about the body of christ he's also teaching about the antithesis body of iniquity we are seated somewhere they're seated somewhere we're seated in the heavenly places they're seated in the lake of fire that's the way it works it's through the types, through the three witnesses that you can see all these things. So that's basically what I'm showing you. There's only three places in the Bible where the phrase times 
an epox is used. Daniel uh, chapter 2, 20 and 21. First Thessalonians 5, 1 through 2. Right here. And in Acts 1. That's only three places. And let's read what it says right here. So when they came together, they were asking him, saying, Lord, is it at this time that you're restoring the kingdom to Israel? And he said to them, It is not for you to know the time or epochs which the Father has fixed by his own authority. The time or the epochs. Right? Oh, I see I need to put a blank here. I, mean, I need to put a space there. Well, let the name of the Lord be blessed forever, for wisdom and power belong to him. And He is. it is he who changes the time and the epochs. Now you can see right here that the time and the epochs has to do with the restoration of the kingdom to Israel. You can see it right here. Paul is telling them, now as to the time and epochs, brother, which has to do with what? The restoration of the kingdom to Israel. You have no need of anything to be written to you, for you know full well the day of the Lord, which is about, guess what? The restoration of the kingdom to Israel will come just like a thief in the night. Paul is describing how the day of the Lord comes. Matthew 24 shows how the day of the Lord ends. So our rapture comes 3,600 years before the end of the age. So if you're a pre-trib rapture guy, you're right. But the, the tribulation happens 3,600 years later. All three of those interpretations are wrong, as I've shared with you guys earlier. I'll try to get this cleaned up before I get it uh, er, er, everything put together. Before I get this uploaded. Okay, then uh, briefly... Which Bible translation should you be reading? If your English is your first language, I highly recommend the New American Standard Bible. Or balance that with the New King James Bible. That's what's uh, one of the reasons that this is posted in here is that's what they recommend. The reason is because they're newer. The language, the English language is in migration. It's changing. It's evolving. The language of the scriptures is written in stone. It does not change. You see what I mean? So as we we are using words differently, then we have to change, change the translation to update it to the way that we're using the terms. The, from the original Greek that was used 2,000 years ago, that's done. That's written in stone. It doesn't change. It's timeless. It's frozen in motion. Just like the Hebrew. It's the ancient Hebrew. Not the word the words mean today. It's what they meant 2,000 years ago. And what the Hebrew meant even before that. Okay, it's a lengthy article, but for those that are serious about God's living word, which Bible should I choose? Then this is the debate part on that same forum, Bramble Wild. There's the link. There's his submission, and then I'm going to show him the Venn diagram, three witness perspective. Virginia couple threatened with eviction for hosting Bible study. Persecution. That could easily be in the signs of the times, the earthquakes and things like that that are happening. Signs of the Times, Earthquakes and Volcanoes in Bible Prophecy. Really good newsletter. Lots and lots of commentary. Health and Wellness. I think I have a little bit of work to do here. I think I do. Try to get the little boo-boos straightened out before I upload this newsletter. I have a dentist appointment. I'm watching the clock and I'm getting scared. I'm going to be late for it. Thank you guys very, very much for your support. And... Uh, this is where you can come. It's uh, cf.com, christianforums.com, just like it sounds. Register. And again, I go to the dispensationalism room just because there's a lot of good debaters here. Not because I see the different dispensations. Some people think I'm a dispensationalist, but I'm not. Whenever we start getting into each other's throats, then you can easily see why. The uh, I studied with dispensationalists before. And they are really Bible-thumping, get down into the Bible, break things down, debaters, really, really good. It's just, you know, there's about 20 different kinds of dispies, and uh, they divide, they love dividing things, even where they shouldn't divide things. So that's why I'm particularly here. If it says dispensationalists only, I can't, I can't post there. You don't see it, you see, you see me posting in these other ones, but if it says dispies only, I don't go there, because I'm not a dispy, really not. So uh, get more information. Right here at the website. Down here is where you subscribe. This is where you get a uh, newsletter. I'll update. I'll update this in time. Uh, you know, like to number five, the first one for this year, and then uh, get a black star here, and get a, a newsletter. You know, just a uh, 
the first newsletter of the series right here. Here's my Black Star channel and the Scripture channel, the one you're watching this video on right now, is right here. Recent interviews, and I have interviews coming up. Uh, it looks like this Friday, then Crystal Power is going to interview me, even though I didn't. I'm just mentioning it to you right now. Then we had to cancel that from last month because of this medical thing I'm going through. Got, I'm visiting several doctors that are helping me to get through the things. Like I said, there's a lot going on here in the trailer hood. Doing my very best to keep up with everything. Doing my best and God does the rest, right? I hope to call out your name as a supporter this week. Hope you're blessed by this presentation. And I'll see you guys on the next. Um, eventually, I mean, January, I'm still, I have notifications to get out. So much work in January and so many doctor's appointments in here that my intention for this YouTube channel is to make more special reports as time goes on. My apologies, just haven't, it's, it's really so much going on. And if I have a moment to spare, I have to get out notifications. So it's, I'm a little bit limited at the moment, which is why this program was started back in December because starting it now would have been so difficult. It's a difficult, really difficult getting one of these programs off the ground. Thank you guys very, very much again. And uh, get more information here at the website. And I'll uh, see you on the next. Uh, I'd like to, to uh, see you in chat tonight. So if you subscribe now, I can still get you, get you hooked up before. Um, chat time, 7 o'clock, 7 to 9, every Tuesday evening, Eastern time. And uh, so I hope to hear from you and hope to see you there. Thanks again, and I'll see you on the next um, Mr. Report that's coming out next Tuesday.